Egypt's hardline Islamists, including members of the ruling Muslim Brotherhood Party, have gathered in Cairo for a rally calling for peace. That's after three weeks of protests against the government, which started on the second anniversary of the revolution that toppled Mubarak. The rioting has seen tear gas and water cannons used against protesters who've been armed with firebombs. More than 70 people have died in the clashes so far. And for more, let's now join William Engdahl, author of Myths, Lies and Oil Wars. William, very warm welcome to the program. So what we are seeing now is basically a protest against protests. Is there a way to reach an agreement between the Islamists and their opponents at this point at all? I don't believe so. What, what you've had in, in Egypt in the last two years is, in effect, a coup by 12 percent. The actual number of eligible voters who voted for this Sharia constitution, and that's the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, and the majority of the Egyptians, uh, and I have friends who are in Egypt and report on this directly, they are dead set against any kind of Sharia constitution. They want to have their democracy. They want to be able to uh, breathe openly and uh, worship God in their own way and not be told what to do. Now, I think the interesting thing is what's happening in Washington since the uh, second Obama term began. Hillary Clinton was a strong supporter of the Brotherhood option in Egypt, in Tunisia, and elsewhere. She's now gone. You have John Kerry come in as Secretary of State. Uh, we're pending a new Secretary of Defense who's made certain statements that irritate certain Warhawk factions in Washington and elsewhere. And I think what we're seeing is an Obama pivot that this entire Muslim Brotherhood experiment of the Arab Spring is turning out to be a catastrophe, and they're pivoting their energies toward China and downgrading their support of groups like Morsi. So I think what's playing out now is the Brotherhood is finished in Egypt. I don't see any way that there's going to be a reconciliation, and the people the people smell that, they sense that, they feel that, and that's what's driving this. So uh, uh, either the Brotherhood steps down peacefully and respects the will of the majority, or we're going to have a very bloody, ugly uh, mess in yeah, Egypt. But still, the latest bout of violent protests started about three weeks ago and has claimed sure. more than 70 lives. Is this the beginning of, of a new revolution, then? Well, a revolution is a, is a word that's used very loosely. The question is, what are the power structures? What role will the military play if, if the Brotherhood is out of power? Uh, you know, the, the uh, business factions and so forth. Uh, what role the religious groups will play. And that, uh, Egypt has a strong Christian Coptic tradition. It has uh, many different ethnic and religious groups. And uh, if those are allowed to, uh, to share power peacefully, that will be the deciding factor, I think. Yeah, but there, there, there have been reports of pro-Muslim Brotherhood groups attacking protesters, even peaceful ones. Does this mean Egypt yeah. is becoming a militia state then? Well, I think you have a lot of uh, agent provocateurs uh, making making this kind of thing that uh, uh, hurt the cause or try to hurt the cause of, of the genuine uh, democratic protests. So uh, that's to be expected. But uh, we shouldn't take uh, where CNN zooms its camera in to make uh, opportunity shots in, in Tahrir Square and, and elsewhere of violence. Uh, we don't need to take that as a reality. Uh, CNN's record on this is pretty pretty black. And some anti-government groups have also been accused of resorting to violence and anarchy. Is that really what they need to do to make their voices heard at this point? No, Is there any no, other no, way? Not at all. Not no. at all. I, th that's why I say I think the, uh, the violence in incidents that are blamed on anti-government groups are most likely uh, police provocateurs trying to uh, paint the opposition black. But uh, I don't think that's the nature of the opposition. They're, they're, uh, the vast majority are peaceful and they want peaceful change. I, see. I don't blame them. All right. Thank you very much, William Engdahl, author of Myths, Lies and Oil Wars. Thank you very much again. Thank you.